No, thanks, man. No, I'm not selling drugs. No, I'm recording. Yo, hi. Today, we're talking about Owl House, the newest in the Disney-sponsored isekai block. For the folks that are wondering what that word means, you know, the not total weeaboo degens, you know who you are. Isekai roughly translated means different world, and it's a popular genre of storytelling found in Japanese media, revolving around protags being transported, reborn, or trapped in a parallel universe. Often set in a high fantasy land, often involving video game elements, and oftentimes starring horny dudes creeping on even hornier girls under the pretense of meta humor because the main dudes know that they've been isekai'd. Some popular and well-known examples of this genre include ReZero, Dot Hack, Escaflown, In Another World with My Smartphone, Overlord, Winnie the Pooh, Shield Hero, Konosuba, Dot Hack but worse, Digimon Adventures, Futurama, Dot Hack but better, Fuyu Shiyugi, That Time I Got Reincarnated into a Slime, No Game No Life, Chalk Zone, Outbreak Company, Gate, Cleopatra in Space, Spirited Away, The Time Travel Arc, in Baruto, where he gets isekai'd into Naruto, The Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness, Star Trek Voyager, Samurai Jack, Inuyasha, I like reading books or whatever, but now I'm a peasant and paper's really expensive, and everyone's favorite, Sonic X. So how does this turbo horny animu self-insert fanfic genre apply to the totally different and not anime world of western animation? Well if you haven't guessed, this video is going to be exploring that and the long rich history of western isekai, or as some might call it, portal fantasy. No one calls it that, just this one wikipedia article did. Also the video is about Owl House and how good it is too. Whatever. A video can be about multiple things. Don't judge me. Oftentimes, western isekai plots follow an Alice in Wonderland format, where their fantasy world is more of a reflection of the main character's psyche and the problems that they're facing. More often than not, it's just kind of a playground for them to work stuff out. In isekai narratives like Labyrinth or Neverending Story, they made a huge point of escaping the real world problems by getting whisked away into a fictional world, somehow being the one and becoming a hero of said world, you know, your basic bitch story circle deal. Whereas with your more traditional Japanese sekai, they're just kind of buying ramen or some crap and then boom, crunch ties me captain, you're the one true hero trying to defeat a demon king and bang an animal things. The key difference here is that the world has no real direct narrative correlation to the characters, outside of it fitting in with tropes that not only the main character may recognize, but also you, the viewer, can recognize. Isn't that fun? As the world pushes closer and closer to inevitable globalization, th this world, the, the real world, one of the tertiary side effects is the inevitable fusion of storytelling sensibilities. We see a similar thing in a different genre with Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Although it's kind of isekai, she gets shoehorned from her own, you know, kingdom to the world of Earth, but that's not really the point. It's more of your fusion of traditional magical girl sensibilities from the East and spellcasting equals puberty growing up. Sabrina the Teenage Witch thing going on. I mean, more like the sitcom version, not the Netflix original. Never the Netflix original. <laughs> But, but what about Amphibia, that show I, the viewer, not Chris needing a segue, really wanted to bring up at this very moment? Well, thank you for that very pointed question, viewer. Amphibia is a very smart show with an amazing MC and a whole nother take on the isekai fusion dance because, well, spoilers, just watch Amphibia. It's worth it. It's pretty Wizard of Ozzy when it comes right down to it. And, you know, Anne just isn't a big enough loser to fit in with a waifu enamored excitement brigade. She doesn't have that de je ne sais quoi, but you know who does? Who's that Pokemon? Owl House's isekai world is known as the Boiling Isles, a place with a wonderful color palette of browns and reds that makes the show feel colorful but not whimsical, and in fact grounds it enough in reality to make it more mystical. By extension, this rounded mystical undertone set by the color palette works great with the writing and the humor of the show. Its passive aggressive delivery does a wonderful job mixing meta humor styles of both the western and eastern isekai sensibilities by having stuff like 
this girl getting locked up for writing fan fiction, and also having Luz drool over shirtless hot dudes. Also playing on the themes of mystical and sarcastic, I just want to say the casting of Wendy Matlick as Ida the Owl Lady was perfection. I don't normally care too much about casting, but she is such a jobber in Hollywood. Her performance is the perfect mix of I don't give a cuss, retired bitty, and silver tongue snake oil saleswoman, creating this tone that perfectly reflects the world she's living in. She's like the doctor or Rick, just totally at home where every other character is lost. What I like about the action in this show is that it's not overly dramatic or complicated. It's elegant, simple motions that look so wonderfully smooth. Take, for example, the magical circle. It's the right amount of complex hand motion and flash, but it doesn't detract from the spell's action itself. When it comes to animating action sequences, a lot of movement and flash can be very fun, but it makes it that much more complicated when it comes to making sure the viewer understands what's happening in the fight. Otherwise, you run the risk of winding up with so much filler movement and empty hits that the tension of the fight is completely gone. Owl House has a good sense of restraint and an understanding of motion that really shows a respect for the fluidity of animation and shot composition as a whole. Which <laughs> leads me to my next point. Owl House does such a wonderful job mixing the greatest strengths of both styles of other world stories. Our main character, Luz, feels like an outcast and does get isekai in a traditional Alice style and finds a place where she could belong and decides to say because she wants to grow into a person who she can be proud of. And on the other side of the isekai coin, Luz is still a big enough of a weeaboo neat degen that she makes AMVs and reads trashy light novels. So she has an unbridled confidence and understanding of the world that she just entered. So she's going to have an easy time making it her own. But to her chagrin, they use that fact for humor to shut her down, making it work a lot like, I'd say about a third of your modern isekai pro tags. Owl House isn't perfect. I find a lot of the quirky Cronenberg background monsters are pretty uninspired and bland but when they're important to the narrative, they go pretty hard. I mean, there's just like a pile of dick pudding covered in tentacles, preying off of a tween girl's budding sexuality and uh, offering her a dream world. So like, ugh, guess it takes more influence from anime than I thought. <laughs> My name is King, I'm a tiny demon thing. Call me an ankle butter and I'll make it resting. I'm a right hand bun and I'm on the run. With the Owl Lady Eater, you always having fun. My name is Hootie, I'm rocking your- oh! We got no time for this, Hootie. Alright, alright, jeez. You never want to have any fun. Ow! Hoot!